Hi, my name is Umar Siddiq and I'm a senior systems engineer at OnApp. And today I will be giving you a quick overview of OnApp version 6.1. So this is the OnApp login screen. Uh, this is customizable so you can add your own background image. Currently it's blank uh, and you can change the text. Uh, you can also integrate OnApp with external identity providers using SAML and use that for user authentication. Um, I will be logging in as an administrator first, so I will provide credentials locally. When I log in as an admin, I'm taken to the dashboard. Uh, this dashboard has some graphs showing my resource usage. Uh, below that is an audit trail log using a uh, use for tracking and logging user activities. Summary on the right hand side uh, shows me the number of virtual machines I have, data stores and backups and functions on the left hand side. Now these functions are split into four subsections. Uh, the first section is cloud where I can access my dashboards, my virtual machines, see my templates, uh, see external links. The next section is dedicated to storage. If I click on that, I'm using OnApp software defined storage uh, across the two hypervisors that I had and I can manage different functions related to OnApp software defined storage through this section. The next section is metrics. Uh, here's first of all is usage trends, which is showing you uh, usage trends across your environment in terms of CPU, memory, disks, and IOPS. Uh, you can also have access to the cloud usage function, which sort of gives you all the information, but a little bit more uh, detailed in terms of you can put a filter in and see exactly how much CPU, disk read writes, and bandwidth was used by virtual machines. And at the bottom, uh, the storage related section shows me IOPS usage for the environment. The last section is the admin functions. So things like uh, managing your users, your bucket, uh, your notifications, and then the portal settings. Uh, quickly about portal settings, uh, a few things I want to discuss here are things like uh, IAT and customization. So by default, the portal is shipped in English, but you're free to translate into any language that is supported. Uh, there are quite a lot of languages. Uh, and you can then assign, uh, assign the new language to your customer and user, and they will see the portal in that language. And they'll see all the translations that you applied. Same thing goes for currencies. Uh, by default, we add four currencies here, but you are free to add as many currencies as you want. And these currencies are used to show back billing information to the user. You can control things like what unit and code is applied and how precise they need to be. Another section is look and feel. So this allows you to customize the portal even further. Uh, themes allow you to have customized look and feel for individual user groups. So in OnApp, you can have your user groups containing a bunch of users and those users can then be assigned their own logo, maybe some header for HTML. And you can have quite a lot, you can have as many of these as you want. So each user group within your on-app environment could have a different logo, a different header for HTML. Uh, last bit here is a service insertion framework. So this allows us to bring in external links inside on-app. Uh, here I've created an external link group called external links, uh, which is global. And within that group, I've gone ahead and assigned uh, my on-app website. Uh, so what happens is if the user logs in, if I go back to the cloud portal, you will see a section at the bottom saying external links. Uh, within that, you will see on our website. If you click on that, this is an iframe taking you to the on our web page and you can interact with it. So the way a user is controlled inside on app is, use, is basically a combination of two things. Uh, the first is roles. So every function inside OnApp has a permission associated with it. And using that role, you can enable or disable that permission, which allows you to then control what a user is allowed to do. Uh, you can have as many roles as you want. Uh, you can define them here from our roles section. Uh, so looking at the default user role has some permissions around, you know, they can take their own backups. Uh, they can manage their virtual machines and do different things. However, if you want to modify the roles, it's very simple. Click on the pencil icon here. And this will take, this will show you the full permission list. Within that, you can go in and search for a section, such as currencies, and then decide what actions the customer can take. 
so and you can also search for individual functions as well so for example if i want to enable or disable virtual machine console access for a customer i can then go in search for console look for a keyword and then enable or disable that permission from the not app so this allows me to control what functions uh, are available to the users in terms of what resources are available to the users uh, we use bucket so if, if a role controls what actions a customer or a user can take uh, buckets control what resources they can take and uh, can they can use uh, so things like how many cpus they have how much uh, storage is available to them how many ip addresses what their uh, port speeds would be like so all of these settings you can you can set inside our bucket uh, there's quite a lot of documentation available on our website at docs.onam.com um, and this should sort of shows you how to set this up but in this case a simple bucket could look like uh, this so it has two sections access control and rate card access control is basically controlling uh, what fun what access they have in terms of resources so here I've uh, put in some limits on the number of servers they can auto scale so they can only auto scale two servers uh, below that for my compute I've said they have access to two cores and two gigs of RAM so they can never use more than this in terms of storage I've said they have access to my software defined storage and they can use a maximum of 50 gigabytes uh, they have access to two IP address and 10 MB port speed uh, they also have access to backups and I've left that uh, unlimited so to speak uh, the other section controls my template so when you become an on-app customer you get access to our online template library uh, so if I go to my template list, open that in a new tab. So these are current templates that I have available inside our library and you can add them to your environment by just clicking the plus sign. This template will be downloaded and become available. But in, in large environments, you'll have a lot of templates and you may want to control what templates are available to what users. So what I've done here is I've split my templates into two different stores, uh, Windows and Linux and the Windows one contains my Windows template and the Linux one contains my Linux template and then using buckets I can assign them to users so when the user logs you know he's trying to deploy a virtual machine he only has access to the template group that I've allowed him to use the next section is rate card and this is where you apply pricing uh, for those resources so if I go to virtual section here at the moment there are no prices applied but I can decide how much I want to charge for a CPU core when it's powered on when it's powered off or to apply a discount to the customer same thing I do with RAM with storage I can charge them on basis of usage along with read writes and IOPS for networks I can charge them based on IP address usage port speed usage and upload and download in terms of data and then for backups I can charge them on, on multiple things just to mention in templates you can also upload your own OVAs um, you can use upload ISOs and use them to spin up virtual machines so on will provide all the basic templates and then you can use those templates to create your own custom templates which are unique to your environment now once you have that ready uh, the way users set up so if you have an external uh, identity provider and using SAML you can pass some attributes to assign them to the right groups and right buckets in case of a lo local user it's very simple you can do this via the user interface or through our API so select a login local user 2 first name local second name user 2 then give it an email address I'll just give a dummy email address here select the time zone uh, language so this is for the locale so all the languages that you have translated on app in will appear here and then you can choose which language to assign to the customer select a password click next and this is the role so this is where I assign what type of functions they have access to so in this case they are basic user just select user there are no user groups defined in my environment if they were I would just add them here next I decide what bucket is assigned to them so I will use the local user one bucket that I was showing you earlier uh, click next and save now the users created uh, this is their profile screen that is accessible whenever you click on the users username inside on app um, here I can see a quick overview of you know, billing any monthly fee assigned to them uh, the current outstanding amount how that amount is calculated based on you know backups obvious uh, they might have uploaded 
price last that was shown here uh, they can see or I can see the payments here as well in the payment section uh, buckets can show them what bucket is currently applied to them so they're aware of their limits uh, now using roles you can completely hide this from them so a user will not see what bucket is assigned to him uh, then whitelist is a useful security feature where I can tie a user to an IP address and on app only allows the user to log in when they're coming from the IP addresses defined in this list and then last section is backups so what I'll do is I'll show you a custom user now in on app uh, and how it looks so for example here I have two virtual machines they're owned by different users uh, we will use a user example to log in so if I click on his name uh, takes to his profile screen so you can see he, he has some information here in terms of for their monthly fee outstanding amount I can see my virtual server hourly statistics so click on that and it tells me my virtual machines and how much they're costing me per hour you can actually see there's no prices if I go to the last page uh, you'll see that I delete a nick and it's showing me all the information here uh, also I can see monthly bills for the users so what I will do is I will combine the monthly bills and store them and here are my monthly bills for the last few months uh, select the year as well and see a breakdown that way uh, and as an admin I have the ability to log in as a user so this allows you to become the user so in case a user reports a problem or uh, you want to see for yourself what the user experiencing you can just as an admin come in here log in as your example and this is just like providing user credentials on the login page now at the moment you see some uh, information is displayed here in terms of this so there's no usage there's no data display but on app is telling me that they're using one core using about half a gig of ram six gigs of storage no iop activity the virtual server was booted up a few days ago and nothing's happened since then uh, and this is the user view now notice that the functions on the left hand side are now limited it is not as big as i saw, saw as an admin uh, user still has some admin functions so you can see they use their role their users um, payments uh, they can see their metrics now if they click on metrics this only shows them their metrics the multi-tenancy kicks in uh, from within on app so the user only sees the resources that only belongs to them uh, going back to the virtual server screen i can click on virtual servers uh, virtual machine sort of dashboard single virtual machine here tells me some information on the number of backups it has uh, if I click on the virtual machine itself it takes me to the virtual machine dashboard and here's some useful information um, I can see my FQDN what resource it's on login password um, and I can see the IP addresses where it has two interfaces and two IP addresses assigned audit trail for the virtual machine itself currently no pricing uh, not much usage uh, I can access console if I click this it will launch a pop-up uh, with the virtual machine console inside it I can manage the virtual machine further reboot it reboot it in recovery shut it down a boot from an ISO if I have one uploaded reset passwords edit the virtual machine I can go in it and assign myself more CPU and more RAM um, going back to the property screen uh, this is the JSON output I'll come to that in a second uh, this is also I can hear manage things like deleting the virtual server etc uh, the ribbon menu here gives me access to some other functionality so I can manage the virtual machine networking I can manage or add network file network interfaces uh, assign IP addresses to those interfaces uh, manage hypervisor level firewall rules I can also manage my storage see my disks uh, add more disks delete disks migrate disks uh, from one storage to another so at the moment as you can see that when I try to do that it didn't allow me because the permission was disabled and it's saying you do not have permission for this action so this is what happens if a uh, customer tries to, tries to take an action which they are not allowed to do on app notifies them and kicks them out so going back to the virtual machine and the same menu storage uh, I can see IOPS graphs here as well so I click on IOPS and I will show me the disk IOPS graphs and I can see the graphs for CPU and, and uh, networking as well. Any backups that I create or take are displayed in this section. I can give a quick note, take a backup. Uh, very simple, easy to do. Uh, in terms of the overview section, also I can have access to my billing statistics. So based on the rate card that we applied in the bucket under the rate card section, or I will populate these prices. So it'll show me how much they're using for CPU and RAM, the network interfaces, and the usage cost, and the disk cost here as well. And this will be historical. So all the data is available here. I can download that and save it as CSV. Uh, 
uh, for the virtual machine. Okay, so deploying a virtual machine is very simple for the customer. Uh, there's a create server button on the right hand side when the user logs in, creates a server. On app list, the two template stores that we created earlier as an admin, so Windows or Linux, Linux VM. Tells me the minimum size for the Linux VM and what virtualization type is supported. I click next. Here are label three or test VM2 domain leave password for ONAP to auto generate. And based on the rate card, ONAP will show me the pricing here as well. So based on the minimum resources, how much the virtual machine is cost. Click next. Takes me the instance packages if I've defined them inside ONAP. Uh, so you can define instance packages inside ONAP and make them available to your customers uh, where they can go in and pick from the instance package of the size of the VM. And you can see the pricing per month and select medium. Click next. You see the price updating here to show me based on prices. This is where I can run recipes. Recipes are scripts that you can, uh, for Linux we support bash, uh, for Windows we support PowerShell VBS and batch files and you can store them inside uh, on our control panel and run them on virtual machines on demand. So here I want to run this script, drag and drop that in. Next, uh, I can enable automated backups, build virtual server, boot it, create virtual server and on app will trigger all the actions which are needed to build the VM so you can see the actions being queued. Here as well, the pricing, and once the VM is ready, I'll be able to access it and manage it. Uh, for example, I can access, access the functions here as well. Now, I will go back to the admin area. Uh, please refer to our documentation. It contains a lot more information. And if you're a new customer looking to acquire on app, please contact our sales team. If you're existing customers for any questions or any queries, feel free to contact our support team. Uh, the documentation is available on docs.onapp.com and this contains quick get started guides, uh, some mistake documentation, integration with billing systems such as WHMCS, Hostbill, and Ubersmith. And uh, the key thing here is the administration and user guide. So this will give you a sort of deeper understanding of our features and functions. So thank you very much for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you again soon.